Now, I said I'm going to prove to you that this usage variance is your abnormal loss of 100 kilograms that we calculated up front. So in the calculation just below, I'm showing you that the usage variance represents an abnormal loss. It's not the normal loss, it's the abnormal loss because your standard takes normal losses into account. So you'll see all of this ties back to the previous calculations that we looked at up front where we calculated the abnormal loss to be 100 kilograms. Let me just show you quickly where I'm getting that from. Here's our upfront calculations. We said there's an abnormal loss of 100 kilograms. So I'm going to prove to you now that this abnormal loss is your usage variance. So how do we calculate the usage variance? Go back to the framework that we wrote down quickly up front. Sorry, lots of scrolling going on here. But your usage variance is the difference between the standard price and the actual quantity in the actual mix and the standard price multiplied by the standard quantity flex to actual output. The difference between those two will give you your usage variance. So if we write that out, this is your usage variance. So remember, with the usage variance or the quantity variance, the price stays the same. It's the standard price, and we are comparing the actual quantity to the standard quantity. So that's why it gives us a usage or a quantity variance. So another way to write this out mathematically is we are comparing the actual quantity to the standard quantity. And in order to get the rand value of the usage variance, we multiply that by the standard price. But the standard price is exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the quantity. So that's another way to write that out mathematically. So that's what I'm doing over here. I'm showing you how the usage variance was calculated. We are comparing the actual quantity in the actual mix. So guys, this comes directly from the question. You were given the actual quantity that they purchased. And remember, they don't hold any inventory of material, so that is the actual quantity that they used in production. We then need the standard quantity flexed to actual production. Because remember, the standard quantity must always be flexed to actual production when we calculate variances. Now, you don't have to perform these calculations again, guys. We already performed these calculations when we calculated the yield variance. Here's the standard quantity flexed to actual output. So please remember there were two different alternatives, but that's how we calculated the standard quantity flexed to actual output. All right. So remember, when calculating the usage variance, we are comparing what they should have used to actually produce 22,000 units. So to actually produce 22,000 units, they should have used 1,320 kilograms of material A. They actually used 1,265. So they actually used less than what they should have. We are sitting with a 55 kilogram favorable variance. Now, if you want the rand value of that variance, you just need to multiply by the, the standard price per kilogram. So remember, the standard price per kilogram for material A was 90,000 rand. So that gives you the rand value of the variance, and that's the variance in kilograms. Then the same logic applies to material B. If they actually produced 22,000 units, they should have used 880 kilograms. They actually used 1,035 kilograms. So because they actually used more than what they should have, this variance is unfavorable. And it's 155 kilograms unfavorable. Now, if you want the variance in rand value, you just need to multiply by the standard price per kilogram, and that will give you the rand value of the variance. But that's not really what I'm interested in. I want the rand value of this variance to show you that I've calculated the usage variance, because you can see it ties in. We've calculated the usage variance over here. But if you want the usage variance in kilograms instead of in, un um, instead of in rand, sorry, because this is obviously the usage variance in rands, if you want the usage variance in kilograms instead, then here's your usage variance. 
And that ties in to the abnormal loss that we calculated up front at the beginning of this question. So that proves to you that this usage variance over here represents an abnormal loss. And the standard takes all normal losses into account.